is about brain and today we are talking about rigging basics. So there is many ways to rig, I mean every studio has its own way, every production has their own little thingies, but today I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about the very very basics. Like how do we name a rig, how do we store a rig, or how do I name all my bazillion little layers. Well, today's your lucky day because I'm answering these little questions. First of all, a rig usually comes in little groups, just like so. So you have the group containing your rig with a little peg here. And that peg doesn't have any animation. Usually it will be used by uh, the layout posing team just to put the character in your scene and like give it a size. And then you don't animate it. It's just there to place your character inside the scene. And usually the pivot should be done here. Yeah, it doesn't have a name, but I usually call it the posing peg because yeah, it will usually have a little keyframe at the beginning and that's all because then you place it in your scene and then it's ready to go. The rest of the animation will be done on the master rig to move it around. Boop, 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 boop. So next thing, in a rig, it is mandatory to have your peg separate because your peg can have two different modes. So in a rig, it is very mandatory to have your pegs as separate. It's very important. This is because in separate, you can animate your three axes independently, but when you use 3D path, the three axes are kind of fused together and the only thing you can play with is the velocity of your animation, which is amazing for camera movements or like trajectories. But for animating a rig that has pieces going in the Z axis, for example, it's not the best thing. So for rigging, always go with separate peg. Another quick tip is make sure that your drawing cannot have keyframes on them because there's nothing more confusing than having animation on your drawings, you know, pink selection, and on your pegs, the yellow selection. So a good way to prevent this from happening is to go inside your rig and make sure to select everything with Control A and then go inside this little box right here and make sure that all the pegs were in separate mode and that all the drawings add this animation using animation tool, little trinket, set to off. So this way, if I ever select my drawing by mistake and put a keyframe on it, just like so, here, if I move it, it will create a key but on the peg on top of it, which is pretty neat. And anyway, you're supposed to animate with your master peg collapsed, so then if you put a keyframe, everything under it has a keyframe. So then to prevent your drawing from having keyframes themselves, it is very important to protect them and make sure you do this little step when you're done with the rig. It takes five seconds and then your life will get insanely better. <laughs> Another important thing is how do we set up a rig visually inside the node view? First of all, some people will group some parts of their rigs, some people don't. The way I rig is called the flat type. It's because everything is layered flat on your node view. I don't have any groups or barely any groups. Sometimes I'll group the head because usually, this is a small rig, but usually just the head takes all these nodes. So. I'd rather have it in a group, but that's really the only thing because I hate, like I've worked in compositing for a few years and I hate it to dig into groups and get out of groups and it's just a nightmare. And since I teach, I usually prefer to have my rigs all layered out there so that everyone can see what's going on. Uh, but sometimes people group things, it's okay. Just make sure that things are grouped logically and that you don't have too many groups. But either way, using backdrops is really important. So go ahead and put the main things into backdrops. It's gonna help people understand your rig. Now, how do we use backdrop? How do we create them? I'm gonna remove this one to show you. I'll select all of these nodes, which are the little hair pieces there. I'm gonna go here, insert, backdrop, and voila, you have a little box around your node. And if you move this box, everything moves together. It's really cool. If you want to change the size or if you want to catch more nodes, you can click on this little triangle right here and you can move it to remove things from your backdrop or to add things to your backdrop. And then if I click on my triangle, it allows me to also move my box away from my node. So if I want to delete it, you, you, you nudge your little triangle, you move the box out, and then you click on it and you delete it if you want to get rid of it. Last but not least, if you have a backdrop, you can click on the little yellow square. You can give it a name and you can choose a little color here to help you organize it. Backdrops are useful to keep your rig in order, but they're also useful to keep some notes. I mean, I don't have anything to say about the hair, but let's say that I had a little little note set up like that that I would like to keep track of. I could take it. I could, and let's pretend this is a compositing system. <laughs> you could put it in the backdrop and call it for basic eye setup. Then you could write connect the drawing to the cutter and the other to whatever and then you can keep notes so it's very useful when you do compositing or when you do rigging systems and you want to teach somebody else how to use it you can leave these little notes and when you're done you can take this backdrop copy it and you can even paste it inside your library
Oh, I put some space in it. You're not supposed to put spaces in your name. Sorry, I'm a little tired. It's fine. And then if I go inside my node view, you can get your little system and like drop it in your scene and the notes are there. So yeah, this is usually how I tell my students to take notes in my classes. Last but not least, I'm gonna talk to you about how do you organize your notes inside your rig? Because now we have the group, we had the boxes, but inside the boxes, there's also a lot of important stuff going on. First off, it's important to align your nodes because it makes everything easier. So this is a basic cross auto patch system like we've seen in the other video that is linked in the description below. I think this part of the rig illustrates very well how a rig should be made. So you have your drawing layers in a line in the center and everything on top of your drawing layers are pegs and transformation nodes such as deformers, quad maps, grammatic outputs, everything that is green should go on top and everything that is dark blue, so an effect node or a filter node like the line art, the cutter, anything that is dark blue should go under. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this little video about rigging basics and I'll see you next week in another video. Have a nice week!